Hi, this is David. Welcome to video 6A, which is the first of four videos devoted to the credit risk topic, which is a part two topic for the 2012 FRM. And so we follow the sequence of the study guide as usual, meaning we have two academic papers that reappear in the FRM from prior years, especially this first one, understanding the securitization of subprime mortgage credit has been for several years in the FRM, and it actually contains a quite a concrete case study of a securitization, as opposed to there's a lot of readings out there with theory, but we get a lot of the uh, concrete details. And 6A1 and 2, um, neither of which are high uh, relevance for the exam, um, these spreadsheets, but uh, 6A2 in particular, illustrates with a couple of different interest rate engines, the Monte Carlo simulation. So understanding the securitization of subprime mortgage credit. And um, on the left, I have uh, my diagram for a generic securitization, and that would be a cash securitization. And on the, on the right-hand side, the uh, same sort of securitization, but with the players inserted in this particular case. And it's the G, uh, Goldman Sachs AMP Trust. And that's the name of the special purpose entity that is analyzed in the paper. So in the generic format, on the left-hand side, we have a pool of credit-sensitive assets. So notice that securitization, say what, so we can say, we can talk about pros and cons, but there's clearly a diversification benefit to pooling these credit-sensitive assets. And then a cash securitization, these are sold to the special purpose vehicle in a true sale. How does a special purpose vehicle purchase those assets? By issuing credit link notes or notes to the investors. So the investors per, uh, use their purchase price or cash. That's used to purchase the underlying credit sensitive assets as collateral. And then in this securitization, there's also a structured finance element doesn't need to be, these investors can all participate uh, ratably, in which case this could be a pass-through. But in this case, the securitization also has structured finance on the right in the sense that investors are purchasing note notes at, on different tranches. And then notice also in the generic here, we could take the triple B tranche, I really meant to draw the triple B tranche, take those and pull those tranches themselves such that they become collateral in a CDO. So the difference here would be the nature of the collateral. Here, the collateral is credit sense uh, is mortgage pooled mortgage assets, maybe uh, uh, adjustable rates or fixed mortgage. Here, the collateral in this second layer. Here, the collateral is tranches of. A securitization itself and if, and of course we can take this another layer with a CDO squared. In the case of this generic case we had as the originator now bankrupt New Century Financial, one of the more prominent burnouts, uh, flameouts from the um, um, subprime crisis. They were the originator. We had the trust as a special purpose entity. Deutsche Bank was a trustee. Goldman Sachs was an arranger and also assisted with the asset swap, a servicer, um, I think started with Aquin, transferred to uh, Wells Fargo, and as usual, or I shouldn't say as usual, but as as, as commonly was, is the case, two rating agencies, Moody's and S&P. And in this case as well, in the specialist case, investors purchased uh, notes. So these are liabilities issued by the special per, uh, purpose entity in different uh, tranches. A, Class A, uh, Mezzanine, and the Class X. So we'll zoom in on that in a second. But so that's the basic nature of the securitization. There is uh, the essence of it here, aside from that pooling, diversification benefit, is a transfer of credit risk from the originators to the investors. The investors are purchasing credit risk in exchange for that. They're expecting some yield. 